I wish to apply for acceptance as a participant in Corps Freedom Ride, 1961. To travel via bus from Washington, D.C. to New Orleans, Louisiana, and to test and challenge segregated facilities en route. I understand that I should be participating in a nonviolent protest against racial discrimination, that arrest or personal injury to me might result. The Freedom Rides of 1961 were a simple but daring plan. The Congress of Racial Equality came up with the idea to put blacks and whites in small groups on commercial buses, and they would deliberately violate the segregation laws of the Deep South. We were to go through various parts of the South, gradually going deeper and deeper, six of us on the Trailways bus and six of us on the Greyhound bus and see whether places were segregated, whether people were being served when they went to get something to eat or buy a ticket or use the restrooms. One of the major thrusts of the Freedom Ride was to get the movement into the Deep South. Most, most of the action up to, up to this time had been in the Upper South or in the North. And one of the ideas here was to go into the deepest South we were hoping that this would start a national movement. It was a very disconcerting uh, period. It was uh, as if one civilization was just coming unhinged and was free floating and taking on water. People in the South felt, I'm being asked to live in a different way. I'm asked to have different attitudes. I'm asked to behave differently. And as I'm being made to do all of these things, there are people who come on the TV in my own living room and tell me that I'm a redneck and I'm a racist and I'm all of these things. And by God, I'd like to, I, 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 I just like to punch some of the, 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 them damn agitators right in the face. I gotta hate somebody. I got to hate somebody. I lived with my family five miles out of Anniston on the Birmingham Highway. I was 12 years old at the time. My dad had a grocery store beside the house, and the name of it was Forsyth & Son Grocery. One day, he said, there were some black agitators, nigger agitators, coming down from the north. He said he and some of his friends had a little surprise party planned for them, and he kind of laughed. As we entered the city limits of Anniston, we could see the bus station. Looked like at least 200 people were around the bus station, all men. They were calling us all kind of names, uh, nigger, nigger lovers, communists. Come on out and integrate Alabama. We dare you to do this, we dare you to do that. The men began to come closer and surround the bus completely. They were saying, let's kill these niggas on this bus, and these nigger lovers. The Aniston clan had it all worked out. 
They had one of their members lie down in front of the bus. They were puncturing tires. They were breaking windows. They wanted to make sure that bus couldn't leave before they could surround it and do whatever they wanted to do. The bus may have been there for 10 or 15 minutes. To us, it seemed like an hour. Another bus driver was able to ease the bus through the crowd. At first, uh, there was feeling of relief because we were getting away there, we thought. But uh, this car that was in front of us kept dodging from side to side to keep the bus from getting by. I spoke to a innocent passenger who was sitting there and said, I'm sorry I got you into this. And he said, so am I. <laughs> Eventually, we heard that sickening sound of tires going flat. There was a commotion outside. So I walked to the front of the store to see if I could tell what was going on. The bus driver came out, and he went out to look at the tires. And when he realized how flat and hopeless they were, he just walked away from the bus and just left all the passengers to fend for themselves. He just walked away. We were now in the hands of this mob. It didn't look good for us. I'm like everyone else on the bus. I'm, I'm pretty afraid, okay? That's putting it mildly. I watched as a man raised his arm above the crowd with a crowbar, and he broke out one of the back windows of the bus. You could hear him say, throw it in, throw it in, and asking, where is the gas, where is the gas? The hand went down, and when it came back up, it had some object in it that he threw into that hole. And there was immediate flash fire on the bus. Pretty soon, the whole back of the bus was black. You couldn't even see in front of your face. So I ran up to the front of the bus, and I tried to open the door. Only thing I could hear is, let's burn them niggas. Let's burn them niggas alive. At that moment, the fuel tank exploded. I heard somebody say, it's going to go. It's going to go. And they ran, and that was the only way we could get that door open. The door burst open and people just spilled out into the yard. They were practically tripping over each other because they were so sick and they needed to get some air. I can't tell you if I walked off the bus or if I crawled off or someone pulled me off. When I got off the bus, a man came up to me and I'm coughing and strangling. He said, boy, you all right? And I nodded my head, and the next thing I knew, I was on the ground. He had hit me with uh, part of a baseball bat. People were gagging, and they were crawling around on the ground. They were trying to get the smoke out of their chest. It was just an awful, 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 awful scene. It was horrible. It was like a scene from hell. It was, it was the worst suffering I'd ever heard. Yeah, I heard water. Please give me water. Oh, God, I need water. I walked right out into the middle of that crowd. I picked me out one person. I washed her face. I held her. <laughs> I gave her water to drink. And as soon as I thought she was going to be OK, I got up and picked out somebody else. As I'm getting up off the ground, four or five guys coming at me again. And this is when I see the highway patrolman. He pulls his gun, 
and he fired in the air. He says, okay, you've had your fun. Let's move back. And that's what stopped, what stopped it.